Like I said, my, my name is Johnny Hughes. Uh, I am one of the, the CentOS developers, CentOS, CentOS, CentOS. We don't care what you, what you call it, just use it. Um, and basically, uh, you know, we get asked that question a lot, so we don't care. Call it whatever you want and use it. Uh, on my first slide, I, I got a, a list of what I did, who I am, where, I, where I've worked. Uh, I just put that in the slides so that uh, when they uh, post the, the uh, PDF online, you, you can have that as a point of reference. Uh, and as a brief history, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, the, uh, I was one of the original members of the, the CentOS project uh, when we got it off the ground. And uh, since about 2012, I've been able to work on doing nothing but CentOS full time, uh, which is which is quite fun in comparison to uh, having to have a, a full time job and then uh, manage and do the uh, the other project uh, after everybody goes to bed. Right, so it's it's much better to do it full time. Everybody gets a better product, and and we're happy to be able to do that. Now, okay, so uh, a basic history of uh, CentOS Linux. Uh, we're ten years old. I have some T-shirts. So after the lecture, before lunch, I'll pass out some T-shirts to everybody who's uh, at the lecture. Uh, we've been around for a while. 2003, basically, the CentOS project started uh, as Red Hat Linux shifted to being Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora. Uh, right about that time, there was a, a Red Hat Enterprise build list. Uh, several people on that list started several different uh, Enterprise Linux projects, and the end result was that uh, in 2004, uh, CentOS released a, it, its first release in March of 2005. And at that point, we were part of the Chaos Linux project. Uh, at, in 2005, about a year later, uh, the Chaos Linux project and the CentOS project uh, went uh, split into different directions. Uh, one was uh, a, doing a development of uh, a brand new operating system. We were doing a rebuild of uh, enterprise level system so uh, we split our resources and decided that uh, it, we were too diverse in, in what we were trying to accomplish to be part of the same project at that point um, and and basically from about March of 2005 until 2014 everything stayed the same we were a group of uh, volunteer people and then in 2014, we joined forces with Red Hat, and now uh, we are part of the community.redhat.com group. So, and Red Hat now releases their uh, all of their Red Hat Enterprise Linux source code through git.centos.org. Okay, so the his a, a brief history of Zen on CentOS or CentOS, I say it different as well, so. Um, with, uh, with CentOS 5.0 in April of 2007, uh, there was support for uh, ZenDOM 0 and ZenDOM Dom U installations. Uh, and that was the first time that Zen was supported on any of the, uh, the CentOS releases. Also, about the same time, in CentOS 4.5 at the time, uh, there was support added into that distribution uh, to be able to run a DOMU. So as a client, uh, usually you would you would run that that CentOS 4 DOMU client on CentOS 5 or, or RHEL 5 uh, or one of the other distributions. So so we had uh, DOM0 support on CentOS 5 and DOM you support on both 5 and 4. But 
in version 6.0 of CentOS, uh, in 2011, the Zen support was removed uh, for the DOM Zero. Uh, Red Hat made a, a business decision that they were going to uh, go with KVM only. At, at, uh, in earlier releases, they supported both KVM and Zen, and they made a business decision to uh, to to move to one uh, ver one hypervisor, the KVM hypervisor. That left CentOS users out in the cold. Anybody that ha had before picked the Zen hypervisor, it left them out in the cold uh, on being able to do upgrades. It wasn't a, a super pressing problem because uh, CentOS has support for 10 years. Uh, you can, so version 5 is still going to be around even now for another three or four years. So uh, they had capability, but they didn't really have an upgrade path. And uh, we started working around that time to figure out how we could add uh, DOM Zero support back into CentOS. Uh, we we got with several people. We we started make we started having discussions, started having talks, and uh, started interfacing with the CentOS. I mean, with the uh, Zen.org people to see if we could come up with a way for actually bringing Zen. Uh, DOM Zero support back into CentOS, and also for uh, coming up with a mechanism for doing, doing a newer version of Zen in our distribution. So, does anybody have any questions uh, on anything we've covered up to this point? Just a basic history and 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 what what got us started in this new. Thing that we call the Zen for CentOS project. Yes. Yep. Now that you're sort of converged, I'll say, would Red Hat releasing stuff into CentOS? Right. That's the initial code release. I mean, you still diverge, right? Where when they have security fixes or other fixes, they're doing theirs, and CentOS is doing their own, or are they one and the same? Well, the answer to your question is CentOS is a community right. project. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is obviously the, uh, the, the Red platform Red. project. So Red Hat source code is released through the source code for the community source code is released through git.centos.org. So that's, that's their public release process of source code, right. not binaries. Right. So, so that's that's what happens. So the so the answer to your question is, RHEL and the RHEL build system and CentOS and the Sysop, CentOS build system are completely separate. Um, we don't have the CentOS team doesn't have any um, any visibility of the RHEL build system or the RHEL source code or the RHEL anything, the RHEL binaries until they until Red Hat actually pushes that source code into git.centos.org. So Red Hat pushes source code in, we get it, and we build it. So it's totally separate. And that's also true of the test procedures, right? The, the QA procedures? Absolutely. Red Hat has their own QA system. They QA things. Uh, they QA their rel sort, uh, builds, their rel binaries. Uh, CentOS has a, a QA build system, and we uh, QA our uh, binary separately. Okay. That's correct. Just validate it. Any other questions? Our, our QA system is, by the way, uh, is completely open. Uh, you can go, you can look at the, the, the QA process, you can look at the, uh, it, it runs in Jenkins. Um, it, it's available and, and open for anybody to look at. Uh, our build system for is completely open. Uh, you can look inside the build system. You can see the that we use mock as our build routes. You can see the build logs and the root logs within the system. Uh, 
so everything that we do is is now uh, for version seven is now completely on buildlogs.centos.org, and the QA uh, system is available to look at as well. So there's uh, there's no implication that Red Hat's moving back to Zen, right? It's just just CentOS. What's that? I, I didn't understand the question. There's no uh, implication that Red Hat is actually moving back to Zen. It's just uh, CentOS. Right. R right now, only the CentOS project uh, has Zen 6 support, or I mean Zen 4 support on, on our version 6. Um, we will have, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later in, 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 in the presentation, we will also have uh, Zen 4.4 support in CentOS 7. Uh, very soon, uh, we, we're working on that. We're working on. Uh, I know. I know that the the Zen server is is also going to uh, have uh, will be uh, uh, CentOS seven. We'll have CentOS or will be on uh, installed off of there as well. So, so so seven support. But if the, the software that we create, the software that's in, that, that, that we're going to talk about here, will run on RHEL as well as run on CentOS. Uh, obviously, uh, Red Hat doesn't support Zen on RHEL. Any other questions? All right, so the Zen for CentOS project we got together with the Zen community team and the CentOS project, and we created this effort. Uh, we started in December of 2012. Um, something notable about this, so, some notable things about this is that it was the first, at the time we didn't know, we had, we had never done anything like this as part of the CentOS project, right? CentOS was a rebuild of Red Hat source code, whatever they put out. We built it. That was our goal, and we never had a need to uh, add a whole bunch of other things to the in, to the operating system. But after Red Hat made a decision that left a, a significant portion of our users without the ability to upgrade VMs, and uh, we needed to come up with a, a mechanism to do something that we had never done, which was add some support for a major portion. Uh, we did that by uh, starting a, uh, a sub-project and, and what we now call those things are special interest groups within the, the CentOS organization. Uh, and we're doing a bunch of those now, but this was the first one. Um, so we, worked, we, we came up with a mechanism for working out how we were going to do that. Okay, we had members from several places, uh, some Citrix some people from Citrix, from CentOS, from uh, GoDaddy, Rackspace, uh, Zen, so some of the Zen.org people, community people as well, and uh, some people from Open Nebula that were on this uh, working group that we created, or this special interest group that we created in order to uh, uh, create Zen for CentOS. And that was one of the other things that we found that we could do that other uh, places were having issues getting done, and that was we were able to facilitate getting several people together and, and work on a project where it's sometimes harder to do that for for business interests uh, if they were doing it trying to if those guys were trying to come together and work on their own to make things happen. Uh, Zen.org is is able to do is able to do that as well with their community side of things but but we found as a community we were able to go out and talk to all of these different groups and and get representatives to come on board and work with us to be able to uh, uh, work this out because everybody wanted all of those groups wanted the end result that Zen works on on CentOS okay and and, and we we had to bring in a bunch of different pieces of code to make this happen. We brought in a newer kernel, and we were and, and so so we had to decide how are we going to how are we going to 
to build this kernel? What kind of kernel do we want to use? Uh, who's going to maintain the kernel? How are we going to get security updates for this kernel? Uh, and what are going to be the mechanisms? And what we found after doing some research is that the, the LTS kernel, long-term support kernel, uh, kernel.org has one. Uh, they were doing it for mostly for a hard at the time for hardware vendors uh, was the purpose of this kernel, but um, the kernel itself will be maintained for two years uh, by kernel.org, and that that falls in place with you know the enterprise uh, kernel or the enterprise distribution that we have. Uh, we wanted some mechanism for ma making sure that we would still be able to get security updates uh, easily into the kernel and, and, and do other aspects of that. Uh, we also use a, a newer version of, of block tap from within Zen, uh, a newer version of uh, the BIOS for booting, and a newer version of QEMU. Uh, but uh, the, the LTS kernel was, was, a, was also a major plus uh, for being able to uh, uh, start this project and do the long-term support that, that we would need uh, to be able to, to maintain this in, in CentOS. Okay, a whole, we spent a whole bunch of time talking about a whole bunch of history and, and how we were actually going to do this, but using it, pretty simple. If, uh, if you have a version of CentOS 6 installed, all you have to do is yum install CentOS release Zen. It installs our release file. It, uh, that resides in the extras repository, so uh, nothing has to be enabled. It's ready to go after you do the install. Uh, the next Command, the, the next simple command would just be yum install zen after you have installed the, the release file. Uh, that'll, yum, it'll pull in all of the dependencies and do the install. And basically after you're finished with that, there's a script to run that will suggest an uh, update to the grub configuration. And that file is just user bin grub boot zen dot sh. You run that command, it'll it'll uh, modify your grub file initially, and then if you have any uh, if you have any other uh, modifications that you know that you need to make to your grub, you would go in and and make those manually, and basically. Once you're done with that and you reboot, you're booting into, on your DOM0 machine, you're booting into Zen and you're able to then do uh, all of your uh, DOM use support installs, uh, however it is that you would normally do that, whether you use a template and install the, 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 machine, uh, the VMs that way. Uh, if you wanted to use libvert and vert manager which which are tools that are built into the uh, CentOS 6 and what you would what you're probably if, if you were using KVM on CentOS you would be used to using those tools already to uh, to create and use uh, KVM v virtual machines on CentOS uh, there's um, there's a link at the bottom of this slide, and again, the slides go, the slide will be made available. The, the slides will be made available as well as the video uh, on Zen.org. Plus, I'll have a uh, once that's published, I'll have this also uh, on the CentOS Wiki, so people will be able to to actually go to that link and and see and and be able to use Libvirt with with uh, their Zen installation. Anybody have any questions? Wait, wait for the mic. 
you keep uh, mentioning uh, CentOS 6. Is there a plan for version 7? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the, 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 the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But, but the, uh, I'll go ahead and go to that slide unless anybody else has any other questions. Okay, so um, you guys probably all, or most of you guys probably know George Dunlap and also Lars. Um, and they're both members of the CentOS vir virtualization SIG now. Uh, George has a set of and the uh, a set of 4.4 RPMs that that we've been working with already, and it was based on one of the RCs. Uh, but so the uh, and and we have those building. Uh, what we're really waiting on in order to generate that for CentOS 6 is our community build system, which that's the other thing uh, we talked about how we build the distribution. We also have now a community build system for the special interest groups, and and that uh, process there's a process in, uh, ongoing right now to actually get that community build system up and running for for all of the different SIGs, not just for for Zen and the virtualization SIG. Um, so we're we're working on getting the infrastructure in place to build these packages for CentOS 6 right now. Uh, the same process and the same packages we will use on CentOS 7 as well. Uh, obviously there's going to be some there's going to be some modifications and, and, and I've been working on the modifications to the the SRPMs to make uh, to be able to run with system D and not with uh, uh, the, the standard init D uh, system 5 init D which which is in CentOS 6. So the answer to your question is Yes, we're gonna re we're going to release uh, 4.4 RPMs for six right now. Again, for the DOMU and set and and version seven of CentOS, we will have support for that uh, likely well before the 7.1 time frame. Uh, so the change to the kernel that you've had to do with going a new a newer kernel from kernel.org is that still necessary for seven? It will not be uh, it will not be necessary for CentOS 7 strictly from the standpoint of actually we lucked out and the the CentOS 7 kernel is 3.10 and the kernel that we brought in for six to use on Zen is a is a 3.10 from kernel.org so so we won't have to do that we have the option still to do that to use the same kernel in both places. Uh, and, and there's going to be pluses and minuses for, for using the same kernel or not using the same kernel. Red Hat does a lot of modifications to their kernel. And so we're certainly going to have to modify the current version 7 kernel uh, to add Zen options to, and, and, and make it and recompile it that way. Whether or not we, we use the, the standard distro kernel and just compile it with Zen modifications, or whether we use stay with the LTS kernel, we haven't uh, completely decided yet. So either way, you're going to have to have a kernel that you're going to have to manage anyway. That's going to be right. We have to around. manage. We're, we're definitely going to have to manage a kernel, regardless of whether we do it, whether it's whether it has the other Red Hat changes in it or not. Okay. And we haven't decided yet exactly. Uh, which way we're going to do that. And do we have, anybody have any other questions? Okay, so, um, something else that I, that I wanted to touch on, that, that's the, uh, that, that's all of my Zen for CentOS uh, presentation, unless you guys have any other questions or want me to cover something else. So CentOS has kind of merged with Red Hat as well. And I know there are separate entities. How does this work from source code revision? I mean, they changed their whole packaging system, as I understand, when it, came, when it comes to CentOS. 
if you want to do source RPMs, or I, I guess I don't know, is the rebuilding of CentOS 7 with whatever extra libraries that are needed, like Zen, um, are they in separate repository that the Red Hat has, or? All right, let me, let me rephrase it again. Okay. CentOS and Red Hat have now, as I understand it, Red Hat releases their source RPM, so their sources for their product in a repo that they classify as CentOS repo. Red Hat releases their, their sources two ways. They, the public community releases through get.centos.org. They also release direct RPMs to their customers through RHN on the inside through their pay customer. Right, right, but that, that's more of a pre-built RPM right. when it goes, right. So now that the sources are posted for Red Hat um, RPMs and CentOS at the same location, will the Zen, RP, uh, Zen sources that are being built to build Zen RPMs also hosted on git.centos? They will be on, the, the, the SRPMs that we release will be also released on git.centos.org. They will be released as from a different user, right? The, 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 the Red Hat RPMs are going to be released for the, from the user that Red Hat uses to, to import things. The Zen RPMs will be released from one of the users in the virtualization SIG. So, so we're going to have, uh, the, the way get.centos.org is going to work is that, that many, not just the Zen RPMs, but any of the, any of the RPMs that are produced by the special interest groups will live somewhere on get.centos.org and the owner of, of those uh, RPMs will likely be uh, one of the, will likely be the, the leader of the SIG or uh, somebody designated within the SIG to be able to do the releases. Okay. Now, when it's built as CentOS, the signature of the RPM, is that still going to be a CentOS signature? All of the RPM, none of the, none of the stuff is signed by a Red Hat signature. Okay. All of, all of the, all of the uh, RPMs that are built by CentOS are signed by a CentOS signature. Anybody else have any other questions? So, um, so if I install CentOS, um, essentially I, I'm getting a, if I, and I don't install the Zen RPMs, the kernel then is essentially the Red Hat kernel, or is it still modified? So no, I, if, if you install, okay, so a CentOS install, the, the standard CentOS kernel is a rebuild of the source code that was released by Red Hat for RHEL. Right, uh, without the... Without any modification other than, other than trademark, other than yeah. trademark taking out, and specifically in the case of a kernel, kernels also have signatures for modules. Okay, so we sign uh, Red Hat signs with a key that they generate during kernel uh, creation. That's a Red Hat key. Uh, we modify our kernel so that it generates a key that's a CentOS key, not the Red Hat key. Uh, that's with the older versions, the version 5 and the version 6 of CentOS kernel. Version 7 is even a little bit trickier than that because version 7 of CentOS has secure boot support and UEFI support. And so there's actually more kernels than just the module kernels now as well included. There's a secure boot kernel uh, that's, that's based on, uh, that, that's maintained by the CentOS project. And it's a different, the secure boot kernel is different uh, than the Red Hat Enterprise kernel uh, for secure boot, but we do have the capability of doing actual secure boot in a in a, a manner uh, with a key that with a shim that's signed by Red Hat uh, and, and being able to boot that way. I have a uh, another not a Zen specific question, but uh, I'm wondering if you have any insight to why uh, Red Hat acquired, if that's the right term, uh, CentOS. Actually, that's a, that's a great lead-in question because I wanted to reserve a few minutes of time just to actually talk about that the last couple minutes of, of the talk. And so, yes, I do. So, um, a lot of times journalists say that CentOS is a clone of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right? You guys have probably all heard that. But in reality, uh, 
we don't we never said that it was a clone of rel what we said was it was a rebuild of the source code that red hat uses to build red hat enterprise linux right and 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 you might not think that that distinction is a lot but it really is because anytime you have two uh, we, we have some people here from, from SUSE and from some other places. Anytime you have two completely different build systems that, that don't know about each other, that where the, where the exact versions and the, and the build order is, is not the same, you're going to have differences, and, and that's always going to be the case. You're never going to be able to duplicate uh, in two systems that don't talk to each other. You're never going to be able to completely duplicate the packages. So CentOS is not and has never been a direct clone of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Number one, we change some trademarks and we change uh, uh, branding. So that in itself makes some of the packages different, right? But even on the ones that we don't change, uh, it's not a direct exact duplication, nor has it ever been. Now. We, we never really consider ourselves to be a competitor of RHEL either. Uh, the reason being, we've never offered support of any kind for CentOS. And, and we never wanted to, right? We created it because we wanted to use it. If it worked for other people, then by all means, it's open source, and they, and they were able to use it as well. We have millions of, of users all over the world, depending on which... Um, depending on which uh, uh, statistics you use, we're either first, second, or third most used Linux distribution on web servers all over the world. So it, it depends on, on who you talk to or what group is doing the analysis, which one we are. But we never claim to be either a clone or a competitor of RHEL. So why, why would Red Hat bring us in is a, is a great question. Red Hat actually has a thing called community.redhat.com and they have many upstream uh, projects, upstream community projects for many different things. Uh, everybody knows that Fedora is an upstream project for RHEL, right? So everybody understands that one, but what a lot of people don't know is there's a upstream uh, Red Hat sells something called Red Hat Storage and there's an upstream project called GlusterFS for Red Hat Storage. Red Hat sells uh, an OpenStack platform, and there's an upstream from open, for OpenStack platform called RDO. Uh, Red Hat sells several platforms, and several of those things have upstream community projects uh, where work is being done by other than just the Red Hat engineers on a community project. What Red Hat didn't have until they brought the CentOS team on board was a free platform that was enterprise Linux free platform to actually host those community projects. So the GlusterFS community project, they had they had the next stuff on Fedora with GlusterFS. They had the next Ceph and the and the next version of Free IPA and the next version of all of these things on Fedora, but they didn't have a community platform to build around for their current offerings. And so the reason that Red Hat brought the CentOS project in to the community stack was specifically so that they would have the ability to have RDO for EL5 and EL6, have GlusterFS for EL5 and EL6, and have a mechanism for the community to get involved and be able to uh, help uh, in, in, that, in those aspects. Anybody have any other questions? Did that did I answer your question? Okay. Any any other questions? Okay. Looks like we're almost on time for lunch, so you guys won't have to miss your lunch. And unless anybody has any questions, I'm I'm done. Thanks, guys. <laughs>